Hello and welcome to GeekCast Radio. This is episode 199. That's right, the 199th episode of GeekCast Radio. We're almost to 200, although there are actually more. There are actually almost 300 or more episodes of this show, if you count interviews and other special, other non-numbering name things we've done. But this is the 199th episode. It's only taken us 11 years to get here, and the 200th episode is going to be something very special. I am, of course, TFG and Mike. I'm a retired podcaster. I have a problem, apparently. Uh, joining me is uh, the um, um, MacGyver Mac and Cheese. I don't know what we call him. It's Mr. Optimus Solo. Hello, sir. Non retired, just not <laughs> very consistent podcaster. Yeah, well, you've never been a consistent. Look, it's not. Yes, you are very consistent. You are an amazing podcaster and podcast editor, but there's a huge difference between how I feel about podcasting and how everybody else approaches it. For me, because before I met my wife, I have or had no life kind of thing. Like, podcasting is, like, that's... Look at any of my social media posts over the last five to ten years or whatever, however long it's been. I get up. I'm eating breakfast, editing, or recording podcasts. I'm in the middle of lunch. I'm probably planning a podcast. I, you know, it, it, it. I breathe this shit. That's why you're not retired. Hey. What? Pick somebody me. else. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a lot of that going around right now. and I, uh, yeah. You're just fitting in with the group. You're fitting in with the times. No. Yeah, well, no, not really. Fake, fake headlines. <laughs> Mike's not retired. He'll never be retired. Eh, yeah. So, this episode <laughs> of the podcast actually um, came from an idea you had on Twitter. I don't even know how long ago at this point, but you were sharing some memories because we're all in quarantine. And I'm so sick of the PC terms. Yes, social distancing. It's not really social distancing, people. It's physical distancing, but whatever. Right. Um... But we're all supposed to be sheltering at home or stay in place or whatever kind of thing. And you were going through some of your old memories and old pictures and you've shared, I don't know, at least 50 or 60 pictures <laughs> over the last... No, I'm not compl- I'm just trying to tell the audience that you've shared all this stuff. And one of these images was three uh, magazine covers, Entertainment Weekly, TV Guide, and... Another one doesn't uh, have a name. I don't know who produced okay. it. It was probably one of those. It's kind of like how some of my Red Sox stuff is, or some of the 2016's Cub stuff might be. If it's not Sports Illustrated, it's just here's a book done by this company right. that we don't know. Especially, it says Special Collector's Edition, but it doesn't. It's not like Time. It's not People. It's not <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's my. I think my mom, or either my mom gave them to me, or I back in the day, this would have been right around the time I was graduating. Uh, high school um probably or, or during my senior year maybe i don't know but i was either i collected them or somebody got them for me and i just stashed them away for decades well it's funny because i can zoom in on the picture mm-hmm. and the uh, tv guide has daniel thompson at uh 211 something 10th street in oh yeah that's my uh, mom's address that's my dad's oh. name she probably had a TV guide still from when he was alive and never changed the subscription never for that the one. Yeah. The other two, okay. the other two don't have a mailing address on them, so I'm guessing those were picked hmm. up at like the grocery store or something of that nature. Pro- yeah, most likely. Yeah, the the 100 greatest uh, stars of all of, of of the century thing looks like, even though it's not Time Life, it's not the Time Special because I've bought several of the time. Like I bought the the history, the the, the Abe Lincoln one. I bought. Mm-hmm. I've bought other Time Life special ones, and it's not that at all. So, and it doesn't even have uh, it doesn't even have like a a a table of contents or an index. It just like immediately goes into lists, like pictures and stuff like that. And so So it's 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 a magazine for you, (laughs) right? Like, who knows who put this out? But uh, it has a Canadian, nope, New York and Canadian copyright on it. So Hmm, I don't know what that means. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, I was uh, I was cleaning out. Um, I used to have a den, um, and or a man cave or whatever you want to call it. But it was uh, you know I had a desk. I had bookshelves with sports books and 
cartoon books and Star Wars books and things of that nature and all my sports stuff. And uh, the closets were full of things like baseball cards and magazines and whatnot. And uh, in the last week, I had to transition that into, we had to transition that into a nursery. So everything had to go elsewhere. Um, So some stuff went in the garbage, some stuff went in the basement, some stuff went into storage. And uh, as I was sorting through stuff, I took pictures of certain things. And this is one of the things that kind of caught my eye. And I thought it would be fun to dive into a little bit. Very cool. Very cool. So these magazines, as we said, the 100 Greatest Entertainers, according to Entertainment Weekly, 1950 to 2000. Um, that's the main one that yeah. I'd like to get into. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, that's the other one. The other one with uh, like one of them's the 100 most um, memorable t- TV memorable moments. TV moments, which some people will get, some people won't, because if you haven't seen the TV shows, you know maybe you don't know anything you about those specific yeah, exactly. moments. Uh, yeah. But this one is such a broad base, just entertainers, that I feel like mm-hmm. uh, no matter what your niche is, you're going to know these people that we're talking about. With the exception, I think I went through and there was um, four people that I did not know. I had to look up who they were. So hmm, cool. <laughs> I don't feel like they should have been on the list if I had to look up who they were, but we'll get into that a little bit. <laughs> What's so funny about this is as I'm zooming in on this picture and I see the 100 Greatest Entertainers, 1950 to 2000, it's the sports almanac for entertainers. Marty, get in the DeLorean. Basically, except I don't know how you make money <laughs> off of this one. but No. Um, so what <laughs> I've done, at this point in time. I, what I've done with this is I went through, um, I went through and flipped through all the pages and used my spreadsheets um, to put something together here. So I've kind of broken it down into kind of groups. Uh, We're going to discuss maybe group by group, uh, you know, what we think they got right, what we think they got wrong, um, maybe some snubs that they left out and stuff like that. And then it'll give the listeners a chance to kind of chime in and see who they think should have been listed on this. Now, this was just, again, like he said, 1950 to 2000. Um, And I know now we're in 2020, so that's 20 years removed, but it was looking at a half of a half a century there. Um, and the other thing for me, the reason why I wanted us to do this, besides how cool it is looking back on this and why I'm glad it is 1950 to 2000 and we're missing the last 20 years, is because honestly, I haven't really seen, like, yes, there are major stars, mm-hmm. but there are no. In the last 20 years, can anyone actively tell me? That there's another Eddie Murphy or a, or another person like Eddie Murphy or Robin Williams or Tom Cruise or like who's the next Tom Cruise? Like well, I haven't I, seen any of that in the last twenty years. And I think that's the problem is everybody like I'm I'm guilty as charged. Everyone likes making lists in the moment. Like mm-hmm. you know this this is the best movies from last year. Or these are the best s- songs from last year or you know whatever the case may be. Um, mm-hmm. but, but it's from a historical standpoint, that's never actually what you should do. You always should let time pass and then look back. It's almost like Mm -hmm. people do it a little bit better when they think about like historical events or presidents or things of, you know, that type of stuff. They're like, you know, we, we don't know what history is going to tell us 50 years from now when we look back and say, well, this person made these choices that were good or, you know, it's always better to let some time pass and then look back and say, now that we've not in the moment, we don't have any recency bias. Now let's look back and see who actually had that, you know, whatever it is that you're judging or looking at. So I think it's better to look at these magazines should come out 10 years after the fact or five years after the fact, or in this case, since we're talking about such a big time period, I think 20 years is a decent time because it's not going to be too long where people are going to be saying, you know, what's the best entertainers for the first 25 years of this century or something of that nature. You know, we're only five years away from that. So it's interesting. These are the different, (laughs) these are the different categories that I've broken it into based on where I feel like they fit. Um, So we're going to have a group of actors. We're going to have a group of actresses, uh, some male singers, some female singers, um, a small group of actual bands, musical bands, Um, A small group of television shows, because even some actual television shows got ranked, not just individual people. Um, There's one athlete in the group. Then I have what we're going to call comedians slash TV personalities. So think of stand-up comics, think of talk show hosts, think of, you know, just TV personalities in general. Then there's a, there was a lot of movie directors on this list. And then there's some authors and I just kind of have a miscellaneous, which is kind of behind the scenes. They were either producers, writers, um, you know, entrepreneurs in the entertainment business. So 
Very that's cool. Kind of what we're going through. Um, and I have the, I'm going to give you guys the people that made it after I let Mike make a few guesses. And then uh, we'll go through what I think maybe was some stuff that got left off that surprises me. Um, which group out of all those do you, would you think would have the most entries? Probably the actors and actresses. Actors and actresses is up there. There's actually more male singers than anything else. Hmm. Or musicians, musicians and singers. Hmm. Um, it's part of that's because I took some of the actors out and made them more in the comedian TV personality role. Okay, but yeah, those, yeah. those are kind of the two big ones. And then after that, it's directors, actresses, female singers, and then the other groups hmm. are all small. So let's start with the smallest group, <laughs> which is a group of one. So top Tom Brady. 100, no, top 100 entertainers from 1950 to 2000, they included one athlete. That one would athlete, be Joe Montana. I, you would think you could make a case for Joe Montana being on there. Uh, wrong sport, though. <laughs> okay, wrong sport. Um, hmm, I hope it's not a Yankee. No, um, no, no baseball. Okay, well, geez, basketball, no baseball, basketball. No football. Yep, basketball is the sport. Well, it's as of this recording, and hopefully this episode will be out before April nineteenth. So now I'm actually giving. Mr. Optimus Solo, a deadline. <laughs> it's got to be Michael Jordan because the last dance is coming up on ESPN. Yeah, they put Michael Jordan at number 80 as the only athlete that was qualifying wow. as one of the best entertainers of a 50 year period. Um, wow. You mentioned Joe Montana. How about some other names that, uh, and I put some of the stuff out on Twitter and some people reacted. So I got some of their guesses plus some of my own guesses. But um, I think of that, uh, that show, uh, the cartoon pro stars back in the day, you know, they, mm-hmm. they try, try to pick some of the best athletes around. So what about Wayne Gretzky? Mm-hmm. What about the, what Wayne about Gretzky. The best uh, hockey Joe player Mon- ever. Yep. Yep. Wayne Gretzky, Joe Montana. Um, like a Magic Johnson. He was Magic huge. Johnson. Larry Bird, like that's the thing. Like sports to me is finding it is itself again. It, it's entertaining, but it's like the form. Let's take just the four major sports: hockey, baseball, basketball, and football. Mm. You look at the last, let's say from fifty to two thousand. You have all these big name people. Mm-hmm. You look at the 80s, you look at the 90s with the Bulls and Michael and Scotty and, to a lesser extent, Rodman. Um, and, you know, the Celtics with Larry Bird and Kevin McHale and the Lakers with Johnson and everybody that was there and whatever, uh, wherever Shaq ended up with Orlando Magic at first. All of those sports stars are superstars even in retirement. You look at those sports now, I don't see any major oh my god breakout jordans right now you know if you were making this list for the 2000s to the let's say just say 2025 let's say half of the time that they were looking at back in this one i think you could make a case probably for somebody like lebron um you know maybe kobe bryant um you know in the basketball world maybe in the baseball world it's tough because um, there's so many more stars. I don't think you'd – A-Rod was too much in the 90s, so I don't think you'd put him out there. Um, football, I think your guess with Tom Brady would be somebody that you, maybe you would put out there. But, it, yeah, it gets, uh, it gets a little bit different. Everybody would vote against him. <laughs> um, some good guesses on Twitter that I was surprised didn't make the list. One I could maybe see because maybe not as much for America, but uh, Pele – um, from a world standpoint, soccer star. Um, but the bigger one that I thought was a good guess by somebody on Twitter was Muhammad Ali. Oh, yeah. Um, you would think he would have made the list as an entertainer for that time period. But uh, just Michael Jordan sitting by himself at number 80, the only athlete on the list. So wow. you'll have to let us know if you think uh, other athletes were deserving. Maybe the, some of the ones we mentioned, maybe we're forgetting somebody. Um, you know, you think about some of the big time Yankees. I know some of that was way back before the fifties, you know, and that's why you're not going to include somebody like Babe Ruth or, or things of that nature. But uh, yeah, maybe somebody from one of those teams that was uh, more past the fifties, Pete Rose, I guess was maybe too controversial, but uh, interesting, <laughs> interesting that Michael Jordan makes the list there for sure. Um, how well do you know your authors, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> think back Depends. to the think back to the 90s and what authors or uh stuff like that that had movies made out of their works um, let's see dean Koontz, john grisham 
uh, Stephen King. Um, as of this recording, so this is going to be dated, folks. Beverly Cleary just turned 104 years Ooh, old. That's a good one for old school. Um, mm-hmm. you, you already named two out of the four that I have listed here as authors. <laughs> so um, you got Stephen King was the highest ranked author. He was at 21. Um, mm-hmm. And you said John Grisham, and he was at 83. Um, the other most known one on this list would have been Michael Crichton. Um, yep. Jurassic Park and other things. Uh, number 75. I think he did Jurassic Park. Am I remember yeah, that wrong? Yeah. Yep. Nope. And uh, yep. an author, I'm not familiar with him, but Tom Wolf. Um, I've listed, heard the name, but I'm listed not as an author. Familiar. Must not have written a lot of stuff that I know, but I'm sure he's a lot of people know of his stuff. But he was ranked number 28, so he was just behind Stephen King, whereas Crichton and Grisham were in the 70s and 80s. So those were the four authors that they put. Um, authors is a hard one for me because it really, man, it 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 depends on the genre. It depends on the books. Like for me, if I was making, let's just say, a top 10 authors list. Mm-hmm. Like I already said, even though I don't, I've read a several of King's books, but I'm not a, I'm not a horror guy, so I don't right. really read a lot of King. But I would put King on there. I would put Dean King Koontz. Sure. I would put Dean Koontz on there because I like some of his suspenseful stuff. John Grisham, you can't leave him off. What's the um, guy that does all the uh, did all the the Da Vinci Code and the um, oh god Angels Jesus and Demons Christ, and Dan. Uh, Oh, he was God. a pretty big one there for a while, too. He had a lot of stuff that was pretty popular. Um, I'm going to kick myself for not remembering his name. But <laughs> I think the, what you get with Stephen King is not just the author of the books, but then so many of his books became hit movies. Mm-hmm. So you you had cross-genre uh, ability. Yeah. Dan, Dan Anderson, is that his name? Dan something? I don't know. But um, So I definitely can see Stephen King. I was a big fan of John Grisham and Michael Crichton. I didn't read a ton of their stuff, but I liked the stuff that I saw from them. Um, so I can see them coming in at the tail end, but no female authors on the list. Uh, so that was kind of that's, interesting. That's kind of sad because um, people like Mary Higgins, Clark, um, Nora Roberts, um, yeah. Janet Ivanovich. Um, Luckily no Nicholas Sparks either. Oh Lord. <laughs> you know, is it, no, it's not him. It's not him. It's the other one. It's Nicholas Evans that I like. Nicholas Evans did the Horse Whisperer. He also did the Smoke Jumper. Um, the Smoke Dan, Jumper. Dan is, Brown. Dan Brown is who I was Dan thinking of. Dan Brown. Yeah, that's right. But uh, uh, I, yeah, no females that made the list. We did have one good uh, oh, snub that uh, somebody voted for on Twitter when they were trying to guess people that made this list, and that would have been good old Doctor Seuss. <laughs> Why not Dr. Seuss on the list? So uh, exactly. I can definitely see that. They 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 tended to, what I found, and maybe this is just because of their readership or their demographic, they were typically looking for entertainment for, and don't take this the wrong way, but entertainment for adults, not adult entertainment, but entertainment for adults. Right. There's, not, there's not a lot yeah. of entertainment um, directed towards the kids that they included on this, where that would be a big factor. You still have to consider people that are entertaining, you know, all the children in the world. So mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Seuss and would the, be one and, of those. And, and the thing about it, just really quickly, my own history with reading books when I was little, let's say from two to maybe four, mm. I was reading golden books. I don't right. know any of those authors, but those golden books were popular as all hell. Mm. Once I got, uh, you know, Berenstain Bears, Yep. You know, so as a kid, Jan, Jan and Stan Berenstain, um, they uh, for me it was like uh, the Hardy Boys and the, the Encyclopedia oh, well, Brown. Yeah, the the thing I was gonna like for for me after Berenstain was Hardy Boys Case Files. Now, not the regular; it was the Case Files ones that they did. Mm. The funny thing about that is Franklin W. Dixon, who is listed as the author of those books, does not exist. It's not a person. It's a name gotcha. that a consortium can I researched this because I'm like over the last twenty years, I'm like, I want my Hardy Boys Case Files books back because I actually want to mm. go back and read some of those books and I haven't been able to find any one person with like a good chunk of them yeah. for decent enough price kind of thing. 
But I remember reading the Hardy Boys case files and I remember thinking, oh, Franklin W. Dixon must be an mm. awesome dude or whatever else. And like, I don't know, Ghost three Rider. or four years ago, I did three or four years ago, I did some research on it and it, it is not, it, it, it's not even a person. It's just a name. I remember my sister would be reading stuff like uh, the Babysitter's Club, Nancy Drew. Um, yeah. What was the other one? Oh, the Ramona, Ramona books. Um, the, yeah, that's Beverly Cleary, Ramona and Beasts yeah. and all that. Yep. Yeah, but then I know I, I was a big fan of the Wayside Stories, but that, that was only a couple handful of books there. I think two or three Ooh, or yes. four. Yes, Lewis Satcher. Like so. Yes, I have yeah. them. There, there, there were three of them. You would um, even think, and I know some of these authors might have been around prior to this or maybe predated this, but their works carried on. I don't mm-hmm. know the exact dates of when some of this stuff was penned, but you would think stuff like um, J.R. Tolkien or C.S. Lewis or um, some mm-hmm. of those people that did some of those major franchise type stuff could have been in there i know it's too if you were doing 2020 2025 then you're going to be talking about um you know the harry potter author um jk rowling jk rowling and and things of that nature so it's it's interesting how how is it that i remember that and i'm not a potter person at all so (laughs) i i know i've i think i've told you this story and i probably I repeat myself all the time on podcasts, folks. So if anyone's listening to this and you've heard this before, you can fast forward a little while if you'd like. The year was 2000 and I was just moved to Biloxi, Mississippi. And I wanted to get back. And I, yes, and I wanted to get back. Scooby Doo. Yes, yes, yes. I got it. Old man Thompson. Um, So I wanted to get back into reading because before that, I was still reading Grisham. I was reading Grisham's early early stuff like A Time to Kill and The Client and The Firm and all of that. By the time 2000 rolled around, I was 20 years old. So what new books could I get into? What new this could I get into? Because I was trying to, you know, establish myself in Mississippi at the time. I went to a Books a Million. I talked to this this lady named Angie who was working there. And and I told her what I liked and whatever. And she said, okay, well, I'll give you two paths you can pick one or both or whatever she handed me the first harry potter book and the very first janet ivanovich stephanie plum novel one for the money boy wizard who goes around and does all this stuff or former lingerie bounter uh, buyer turned bounty hunter can anybody <laughs> guess which one I went with and never went back? I'm the type of guy that when I make a choice, I stick with it. I went the Stephanie Plum route, and I've never read, and I it, it's not my thing. Here, here's the thing, folks. We all have different interests and likes and dislikes. If we all like the same stuff, the world would be boring, even though we're all staying at home now. <laughs> so it's not that I disrespect what Rowling did with Potter. It's just, I have zero interest in it. And if I don't have any interest in it, why am I going to check it out? But she for sure would be a choice for uh, the next 50 years or something like that. So Absolutely. She yeah. Shoot. So and phenomenal. right. Yeah, ab- exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's move on out of the authors. Then let's go to directors real quick and get them out of the way. There was uh, a handful of directors, probably about, let's say 13. Um, and some of them do have some crossover. Some of them were actors at different times, but we're going to list them in the directors group. So Mike, give me a few guesses of directors that you would expect to make this from 1950 to 2000s. Steven Spielberg. Okay. Um, oh, God, directors. <sighs> this is a hard one for me because sometimes I don't always remember the directors. Uh, Tony and Ridley Scott. <sighs> Michael Bay. Oh, God, please don't say that again. <laughs> hey! Come on <laughs> don't, now. Don't mention, don't mention that, man. Come on now. Come on now. All right, you you got one, um, <laughs> so we'll give you Spielberg. Um, <laughs> he, he was number four on the list, actually. So top five material for Steven Spielberg, um, and a lot of these are going to be pretty well known uh, names here. So we have uh, Woody Allen um, was number twenty six. Uh, James Brooks, I'm not as familiar with, but he was number forty seven. Mel Brooks, uh, number eighty six. James Cameron, Titanic and the Terminator, number ninety five. Francis Ford Coppola was 45. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clint Eastwood, number 27. I could make a case for this guy being a little bit higher. Alfred Hitchcock, 14. 
Um, yeah. Stanley Kubrick, 57. Spike Lee just snuck in at number 99. Uh, Robert Redford, 25. Martin, Martin Scorsese, number 30. And Oliver Stone, number 92. So those wow. were the directors that they put. You'll notice, once again, no females. Um, again, a sign of the times. But uh, those are some pretty heavy hitters there with the likes of Francis Ford Coppola, Hitchcock, Scorsese, Spielberg. Mm-hmm. So those were the directors. You know, who I'm, you know who I'm surprised didn't make it? Who was that? Gary Marshall. Yeah. Um, the other one that I would be thinking um, would be uh, oh, I'm blanking it again, but the guy that did all the 80s films like uh, uh, 16 Candles and Pretty in Pink and uh, oh, uh, uh, John Hughes. Yeah, John Hughes. I would thought he might have snuck in there somewhere, but uh, I think that's a pretty good list of actors that spans a lot of different genres. You got like the gangster stuff, you have the comedy stuff with Mel Brooks, you have the you know drug induced Stanley Kubrick type of stuff, the suspenseful <laughs> Hitchcock, the blockbusters with Spielberg, so um and some of the social commentary with like a Spike Lee. So I, I think that's a good group of act of directors. Um, you know, if they were doing something with uh nowadays directors, uh it'd be interesting to see who fit in that. Probably to have like uh um maybe the Anderson, Paul Anderson or Wes Anderson, um, you'd have Mm -hmm. the um, Coens um, and things of that nature probably making Mm -hmm. the list. So it'd be interesting to to see what they did for the next 50 years. But that's the directors. Let's get into something that you are probably a little bit more familiar at. Um, Let's go into bands. This is musical bands or groups, and there's only six of them that make the list. So six musical groups that make the list from 1950 to 2000. Well, you should get at least a they prop. They probably wouldn't have made it because um, they weren't as hated yet. But Nickelback, um, <laughs> you just wanted to say I Nickelback. Had, I had to throw it out there, but maybe um, we were talking about a right, genre right. And a time period. But this is fifties mm-hmm. to two thousand. No, no, no. I know. Uh, obviously, Elvis, uh, the Beatles, um, just Led keeping Zeppelin. It to yep. So Beatles is good. Uh, Hall and Oates, um, uh, Guns N' Roses. Um, oh, I hate being put on the spot like this. Like, uh, Aerosmith. Like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. ZZ Top. Um, Fleetwood Mac. Let's see who else? One more guess. I mean, uh, crap. Um, 2000, 2000, uh, oh God, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Spice Don't Girls. Do Don't, oh do God. Don't do it. Don't do it. Right. No, we're thinking a little bit more old school here. Um, yeah, I know. So I it's interesting because you, you mentioned probably at least two or three that were on my snub list. Um, but out of the <laughs> six that made it, um, we'll start with the one you guessed, Beatles. Mm-hmm. They came in at number one. Um, of course. Most, top entertainer of the 50 years was apparently the Beatles. Um, the next best ranked one would have been actually the Rolling Stones uh, mm-hmm. at 15. And then we go to number 53, which was one of my favorites, the Beach Boys. Um, and then to interesting one here at number 74, I would never guess this one, but they have Run DMC at 74. Uh, I skipped over another one that I would have never guessed, which is number 69, which is the Sex Pistols. And then number 90, The Grateful Dead. Those are your six bands. So the Beatles, the Beach Boys, the Rolling Stones, the Grateful Dead, Run DMC, and the Sex Pistols. I don't know how Sex Pistols got on there. So uh, some snubs. Um, I would say Pink Floyd. Um, Mm -hmm. I would say Queen. Um, Oh, yeah. Guns N' Roses, Led Zeppelin. Sticks. Um, I had Eagles on my list uh, and Kiss. Um, How is the Eagles not on that? Yeah, so oh my God. it's interesting because I get like the Rolling Stones and Grateful Dead, like those are classic, you know, absolutely rock groups. I get the Beatles because they're one of the biggest groups ever. Beach Boys, you know, had their specific niche and the time and place. I get Run DMC for probably the movement um, of that genre um, mm-hmm. and making it a thing. Sex Pistols, I don't understand, and I really just Pink Floyd, Queen, Guns and Roses, Led Zeppelin, Eagles, Kiss. Like I would think there'd be room mm-hmm. for them over the Sex Pistols, but maybe I'm missing something because I wasn't. Uh, 
big into music when the Sex Pistols were a thing. I don't know. Mm. Somebody, somebody, educate me on why they're such a, a worthy band of being in the top 100 entertainers for a 50 year period. I don't know. Um, so that's bands. Let's move over to TV shows because there wasn't very many of them either. They put five TV shows. We're going to call one of them a TV show, even though it's. Eh, you'll, you'll understand why in a second. But there's <laughs> five five TV shows for a 50 year period that they said were and one of the top entertainers. What kind of TV shows would you think uh, might have made the list? Let's see. Happy Days. Golden Girls, All in the Family, Cosby Show, Knight Rider, A Team, Airwolf. Stop with your Knight Rider nonsense. MacGyver. Stop just, stop just naming your favorite shows. MacGyver, uh, Ma- uh, um, Magnum. Uh, what? Golden Girls? I said Golden Girls. No, you're saying um, You have not hit any of them yet. Really? Wow. Um, shows so big that they lasted decades or. Um, at least that would be the Cosby shows. show. That would be the Cosby show. It lasted a long time. Nope. Uh, oh, decade. They didn't really influence anything but gun smoke. I could have seen that. It was a little before, well, uh, kind of at, right at the beginning of this time period that we're looking at a little bit. But uh, no, we're talking about stuff like. Um, how about a show that features a lot of comedians? That, Every Saturday, Saturday Night Live. Live. Yep, they were in the top ten, number seven. Thank um, God they only counted up to the year two thousand because it sucked the last twenty years. Two shows. They, they might have only included five really shows slash sort of shows, um, but two of them were in the top ten with Saturday Night Live at number seven and an animated show at number ten. Hmm. What animated show would that, that would be? Be Looney Tunes. Nope. No, it's too old. Um, the Flintstones, the Jetsons, Scooby Doo. Too, too old. Really? Yep, you're missing a big one. S- Scooby's not too old. Scooby was 69. Yeah, this one started in 89. DuckTales? No, no, sir. The Simpsons. <laughs> oh, The, the Simpsons, Simpsons, of course. At number 10. So we had Saturday Night Live, The Simpsons, and then I don't know if they're specific to which show or if they're just talking about the franchise overall, but number 33 is Star Trek. Just plain old Star Trek um, at number 33. Here's an interesting one that comes in at number 76. They put the X-Files on here. Why? X-Files, 76. And I'm counting this one in the TV shows, even though mostly it, you know, sketches and movies and all kinds of different stuff, but they have Monty Python on here mm-hmm. at number 77. So here's my snubs. Um, okay. big, biggest one overall, MASH. Yeah. How do you not put MASH on there? Um, I also put down All in the Family, which you had mentioned in your first couple that you rattled off. And then I thought mm-hmm. they might give a, a nod to something like Friends, just because of the type of show and kind of a new era that it was ushering in with like that type of show. So um, I thought MASH for sure, maybe over the X-Files. I, I, yeah, I get, most I, definitely. I get The Simpsons, I get Saturday Night Live, and I get Star Trek. And even though I'm not a Monty Python fan, I get that as well. Yeah, um, X-Files, I know it was a good show and, and well-regarded. I don't know if it's better representative of that 50 years than MASH's or All in the Family. Um, yeah, or Golden Girls. or And, and again... I don't know about Golden Girls, but... No, but I'm, okay, but I like you got to you, you got to look at Golden Girls though because you got to really think about that. That's four women, a show with four women as the main stars in the time of male stars. That's yeah. a big deal. That's true. That's and true. it's four women in Flo- in Miami, Florida who are all aging out and they all have varying things and they all have their you know whatever it's a really really it's a i put golden girls the jeffersons and all in the family in the same like triple threat because Mm -hmm. they're all three very different shows that all put light on certain situations and certain things and for those not to be on a list like this is just And if you were to ask me 10 years ago, probably Cosby Show would be one that I would put on there. And um. here, here, here's the thing about Cosby Show, and, I, and I've said this before online. Yes, the man is a monster. No argument here. <laughs> but for me, it doesn't take away from what those producers and other actors did on that show. Yeah, it was still a funny show. 
Speaking of which, um, let's do, we'll do our singers, or let's do our actors, and then we'll go to our uh, comedians, and then we'll finish with singers. How about that? Um, okay. So let's let's start with actors. There was quite a few of them on the list. We got about 16. I'm not asking you to name them all, but just give me a handful of actors that you would uh, anticipate being on this list. From 50 to 2,000. Oh, your whole childhood. Um, uh, well, no, I'm not that <laughs> old yet. I'm old, but I ain't that old yet. Um, let's see. Uh, Spencer Tracy. Um, oh God, Audrey Hepburn. Just male, just uh, male actors for right now. Oh, just male. Oh, yep. That. That's we'll the do female that, in a second. Okay. Good. Uh, let's see, Spencer Tracy, Buddy Hackett, um, Tom Cruise, uh, let's see, who else? Um, oh, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, who knows? Those are probably pretty, two are new, they'd be on like a new list if we were to do the next 25 years or so, but all right, let's start with the highest rank one. We're going with number 12 on the whole list was Marlon Brando. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then we go to number 17 was good old John Wayne. (laughs) Um, Number 20 was Robert De Niro. Of course. Number 23 was Jack Nicholson. Um, Mm -hmm. Then we get into our 30s with number 32, Paul Newman. And number 37, Indiana Jones, Han Solo himself, Harrison Ford. Um, In our 40s, we have number 41 was James Dean. Number 43 was Tom Hanks. Number 49, Jackie Gleason. And then one in our 50s, we had number 50, or two. 52 was Tom Cruise, like you mentioned. Uh, 54, Dustin Hoffman. 65, Jim Carrey sneaks in there. Um, Number 62, Warren Beatty. Uh, 78, Bob Newhart, more of a TV actor, but still. Um, 84 uh, was Sean Connery. And 97 was James Garner. Um, hmm. So that was the list of actors. Um, a wide range, a lot of some of the more classic ones back in the day. Some, a lot of them from the you know the eighties, nineties, and then Jim Carrey kind of sneaking in almost a, a borderline because he did a little before and a little after this time period. Um, here's my biggest snubs. I'll give them to you here. I got about six or seven. Um, Al Pacino not on mm-hmm. that list. Humphrey Bogart um, not on that list. Dick Van Dyke. Uh, Jack Lemon, James Earl Jones, Jimmy Stewart, and Bruce Lee. Um, those were the ones that I thought maybe should have got some recognition. But overall, a pretty good group of uh, actors there, the who's who of, uh, of Hollywood. Yeah. So I wish, and I don't know, maybe you can tell me later, tell me now, whatever. I'm going to ask this now. We do, we have done in the last 11 years of the GeekCast Radio Network and 12, almost whatever, how many years that we've all been podcasting, we do our top 100 lists because we feel things like this don't do us justice. Yeah, (laughs) It's It's fun to discuss, but, you know, we are the IGN killer, we are this, we are that, whatever. Does it say anywhere in that magazine what the criteria was for how they made the list up? Um, it, it does have like an introduction that I'd have to go through and, and kind of pinpoint okay. wh- who who was voting and and what kind of uh, criteria they were given. But um, that was the actors. Let's move on to actresses. There was uh, 11, okay. 11 actresses, um, much more old school in this group than we got with the guys. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we did have stuff like Marlon Brando and, you know, mm-hmm. Paul Newman, but there was a lot of, you know, Tom Cruise and Jim Carrey mm-hmm. and Harrison Ford. This is a little bit more old school. So we have number three overall. Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. Um, We have number nine overall, Lucille Ball. Mm -hmm. Um, Number 16 overall, Audrey Hepburn. Number 18, Elizabeth Taylor. Number 22, Mary Tyler Moore. Number Mm -hmm. 38, a more modern one, Meryl Streep. Um, 46, Jane Fonda. 48, Julia Roberts. Um, 66, Jodie Foster somehow snuck in here. I don't understand that one. Um, Mm -hmm. 85, Carol Burnett. Uh, 96 Diane Keaton and that is Mm. it for the women so um, the big ones that jumped out at me that weren't there uh, Betty Davis uh, Betty White and uh, Julie Andrews 
I thought maybe yep. could get in there. I don't know about Jodie Foster being on that list. Um, I'm not think, saying anything but, against her. I'm just right, right. No, and we're and we're not trying to say anything against who made the list at all. It's not their fault whether they made or didn't make the list. It's again going back to whatever the criteria was. I think the reason why Jodie Foster maybe made it in Silence of the Lambs, the fact that she was the voice of Ariel in The Little Mermaid. Um, I know she's done a bunch of other things other than that, but. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, I, just, I just, maybe recency bias for when they were making the list. I don't, I don't know because she didn't, I don't think she would be one that they would put on there um, currently. I don't, she did not do the voice of Ariel, by the way. Um, you're thinking of Jody um, Benson. Benson. Oh, Jody um, Benson. Yeah, but either way, um, but Silence of the Lambs was definitely a big one, and she had done some a lot of films in the 80s and 90s. I just don't know if she had enough to be on this list. So um, some that could have been on the actors list that I instead put in this other group, we're going to call it comedian slash TV personalities. Um, okay. so, so we're talking about stand-up comics that also may have done some acting, or we're talking about TV personalities as far as like hosts of, of different shows and things like that. Do you got any guesses for any of those? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Hmm. David Letterman, Johnny Carson, Jay Leno. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see who else. Um, crap. You're doing good. Just You're doing good. Um, but that's all right. How about any stand-up <laughs> comics? Um. Jeff Foxworthy, oh, Bill God, Engel. How did I know you were going to go to fucking blue collar comedy? What? Oh my! God. I mean, it's not like I said Jeff Dunham. Oh lord! All Come right, on I'm, now. I'm not letting you guess anymore. All right, so let's go <laughs> over who made the list in this category that I'm talking about. Um, number twenty four overall. Um, they didn't put the Cosby Show on there, but they did put Bill Cosby himself on there at number twenty four um, okay. as an actor slash comedian, etc. Um, number thirty one, Oprah Winfrey. Um, good old Oprah. Um, number 34, Richard Pryor. Number 42, Johnny Carson. Number mm-hmm. 56, Jerry Seinfeld. Instead of putting the Seinfeld show on there, they just put Jerry Seinfeld on there. Uh, number 64, David Letterman. Number 68, Ed Sullivan. Number hmm. 71, Steve Martin. And number 91, Robin Williams. Wow. So those are the who they put on there. So the big ones that jump off here for TV personalities slash comedians. Um, for on the comedian side, I would put George Carlin and probably Rodney Dangerfield um, mm-hmm. as people that were big for a long time. Um, for the host standpoint, I would probably put someone like a Howard Stern maybe in there, or even a Bob Hope. Um, we had that one thrown out there on Twitter, but Bob Hope was definitely an entertainer for a long time, even before this I though would, too. I would put Bob Hope before I would put Howard Stern. Yeah, the reason about, why is because Howard is just hmm. yeah i get it but uh once again uh, a sign that they weren't necessarily considering entertainment for kids how about fred rogers could we put fred rogers on there as a tv personality i mean mr rogers neighborhood was pretty big for a long time um so i would think someone like fred rogers could be on there but not to be um any other thoughts on comedians or hosts or things of that nature Oh, how about Dick Clark? Yeah, Dick Clark is one that, um, man, that guy did everything. And Mr. Rogers, I mean, how can you not put Mr. Rogers on this list? Yeah, I don't, I just don't think it's uh, considered as much entertainment for kids. Um, another one you maybe yeah. could throw out there would be like Casey Kasem. Um, <laughs> somebody like that oh, from yeah. a radio standpoint. You know, I think that could oh. could be in there. So, um, Or even uh, Ed McMahon. I would not. Uh, I don't know about McMahon. I I only because of my because of my youth. Even though I'm old as hell, I only ever saw Ed McMahon as Johnny's sidekick. I never <laughs> saw him as anything else. So, right. but I guess you could make an argument for it. Um, we're gonna get the miscellaneous category before we get the singers because that's all we have left. So the miscellaneous okay. singers, the, the miscellaneous was more people that I didn't know as much. But these are choreographers, producers, writers, behind the scenes people. But there will be a few that you recognize. So one okay. uh, number eighty seven was a guy named Stephen Bacho, uh, who was a producer. Uh, Bob Fosse, number ninety three. Norman Lear, number forty. 
Agnes Nixon, number 81, and then the two that you should be familiar with would be Aaron Spelling at 67 and Jim Henson at 59. Um, okay, so let's start with Norman Lear. All in the Family, The Jeffersons, Good Times. How how do these TV shows not make it, but Norman does? Maybe that was their way to give them a nod by putting the guy Maybe, I guess. All um, but Jim Henson, I'm glad to see make the list. Yeah. Um, I was surprised that nobody uh, with the last name of Disney made the list. <laughs> um, so that was interesting. Maybe Disney should have bought out Entertainment Weekly at the time, but they there didn't. There we go. Um, and then just two random ones that I'm going to put in as snubs that don't really fit any categories. Um, mm-hmm. What about Mel Blanc? Um, yes. Just a voice um, and a whole industry. Yep. Um, or Hulk Hogan. How about Hulk Hogan? What um, the hell? Well, sports entertainment. There's... He was huge in the 80s um, and the 90s. And uh, you could put a wrestler in there. Maybe Under the Giant. How about Under the Giant? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he, did have some... he did do a few acting things. So there's that. All right, let's get into music. First, our biggest category overall, which was the male, you know, just solo singers or entertainers Mm -hmm. um, as far as a group goes. There is a ton of them. I'll give you, you can name like a half dozen or so. Um, So this is male solo singers, didn't we? Yeah, from the 50s to the 2000s. Not bands, not male actors. This is singers. Um, You did mention Elvis Presley. Elvis. Any other ones that you would think would be on here? Elvis, Dean Martin, um... George Michael, um, uh, I'm fogging up. Okay, and then we'll allow it. You got the big one, Elvis Presley, which was number two on the list. So we had the Beatles at number one and Elvis, Elvis at, number at number two. two. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then I'm um, trying to remember who was three here. Um, oh, Marilyn Monroe was number three. Of course she was. All right, so let's go through here. We had Elvis at number two. We have Frank Sinatra, number six. Michael Jackson, number eight. Um, We had Bob Dylan at number 11. Uh, I'm just going to go down the list. I was trying to do it in order, but there's too many of them. So Chuck Berry, number 50. David Bowie, number 55. Garth Brooks, 98. Uh, James Brown, uh, 36. Eric Clapton, 82. Kurt Cobain, 72. Elvis Costello, 94, Miles Davis, 39, Bob Dylan, 11, Jimi Hendrix, 51, already said Michael Jackson, Bob Marley, mm-hmm. 44, Willie yeah. Nelson, 61, we already talked about Elvis, Prince, number 60, Paul Simon, number 70, we already mentioned Sinatra, Bruce Springsteen, 35, Stevie Wonder, 29, and Neil Young, 73. Wow. So, some heavy hitters. So, wait. There. Simon gets in, but Garfunkel gets snubbed. Great. Correct. Correct. <laughs> um, here's some more snubs for you. How about uh, Neil Diamond? Mm-hmm. Not on the list. John Denver. Elton freaking John. Um, <laughs> you mentioned it before, Dean Martin. Um, mm-hmm. I can't believe Johnny Cash is not on this list somewhere. <laughs> I can't believe he's not on the list either. I thought... <laughs> I thought Elvis would be number one or whatever. Beatles number one, Elvis number two. At least Johnny number five or six. Yeah, Johnny Cash doesn't make it, and neither does Jimmy Buffett. No Jimmy Buffett anywhere. Um, other no, minor ones. want to go to Margaritaville. I guess not. Other minor ones, Barry White, Smokey Robinson, Lionel Richie, James Taylor. Um, but it's hard. I know you only have so many slots, but I would think Johnny Cash and Jimmy Buffett and Elton John would be on there. Yeah. And I would make a case for Neil Diamond and John Denver. Like, yep, they're pretty big. Oh, uh, but you know, and not a lot of country on there. Garth Brooks is about the only country guy on there, which I get. He was huge. Willie Nelson, I guess you could put in there too. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's interesting. No uh, George Jones or you know, not, but a lot mm-hmm. of singers. Let's go to the female singers. There was only nine of them, um, hmm. and that would be any guesses. I'll give you one guess: female singer. Back in the Madonna. Day. Madonna, number five. All right. Madonna was the highest ranked one at number five. Then we have Aretha Franklin uh, and Barbara Streisand were in the teens. Barbara was 13 and Aretha was 19. And then we had uh, 58 was Cher, uh, 63 Joni Mitchell, 79 was Diana Ross, 88 was mm-hmm. Loretta Lynn, 89 was Janis Joplin. And I'm not familiar with number 100, but it says that she's a singer or somebody that has something to do with rock and roll, I think. Uh, Chrissy Hind, Hind, 
Um, I don't know. Who that, I've heard the name. I don't know who that is, so I'm apparently not educated. But um, some big names there: Aretha, Cher, Janis Joplin, Madonna, Diana Ross, Streisand. Um, how about these that didn't make it? Uh, no, <laughs> Mariah Carey. Um, which I get, she's crazy, but she was around for a long time. How about no Dolly Parton? Um, no Bette Mittler, no Celine Dion, and no Whitney Houston. Hmm. Chrissy Hind was the, um, she was the lead vocalist and primary songwriter of the rock band, The Pretenders. That still doesn't help me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, oh, so that's, mm-hmm. go ahead. No, go ahead. I was thinking okay. of the, I was thinking of the Proclaimers. I would walk oh, gotcha. five hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. So that is the list. So, like we said, number one was Beatles. Um, we had number two was Elvis Presley. Number three was Marilyn Monroe. I'm just doing the top ten. Number four was Steven uh, Spielberg. Number five, Madonna. Number six, Frank Sinatra. Number seven, Saturday Night Live. Number eight, Michael Jackson. Number nine was, let me find number nine. Was, you just mentioned it. I know, I did a, a second ago, but uh, now number nine is escaping me. Let me check the actual, like, oh, number nine was Lucy, Lucy Lucille Ball. Lucy, Lucille yep, Ball, yep. yep. And number 10 was The Simpsons. So yeah. um, what did you think of the list overall, and uh, could we have done it better? <laughs> <laughs> well... We'll find out in 2021, folks. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't know, because here's the thing. Like, like you mentioned, it's all very different categories. It's not all one care. Like, if we did if we did a GCRN Wars tournament of male actors versus female actors from this timeline, that would be interesting strange and weird i could i could see a i could see a whole a whole one on bands like absolutely yeah exactly battle of the bands gcrn edition exactly there you go um or stand-up comics we could do a whole one on that yeah oh Um, man but it's interesting again we're looking at a very uh specific time period yeah very specific time period when we're looking at you know 1950 to uh, 2000 so we're not considering anything before anything after um we'd have to lay some groundwork if we were doing something like that but i do think they got a lot right um but man you could make a list of 200 and still have plenty of people to put on that oh absolutely yeah especially when you consider the lack of uh bands and the lack of athletes that they had on there um you could fill up a lot of spots with some of those yeah because here's the thing As popular as television is, and as popular as movies are, and I know no actual film made this list, I would take The Simpsons off. I would take Bonanza, Gunsmoke, whatever the other show was off that made it, and I would fill that with a spot like, like an athlete or another comedian, actor, actress, musician, whatever. And honestly, at this point, we could do... We could take this and run with it so far that we could do so many different varieties of this. Like we could take it out and segment it to the point of, right. like I just said, you could have a wars our wars tournaments do male actors versus female act versus a- actors versus actresses, or author versus author. Does Dean Koontz kill Stephen King, or does John Grisham, <laughs> you know, send? send um uh, john steinbeck to the to jail or you know who, who the hell knows what, what there's so much you could do with this right yeah, it'd be interesting especially i think along the musical lines i think there's so many heavy hitters in the world oh, of music yeah. over the years that it would be an interesting yep. thing or um you know, i think stand-up comics would be really fun um i know everybody yeah. has a different different uh style that they like or different you know personal tastes but um some have been around longer than others and some have been more successful than others and i'd love to see some of the classics destroy your blue collar comedy tour guys but uh hey come on and- okay look i it was just top of my head kind of thing <laughs> uh, and, 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 and and again here, here's the thing like you know we i mentioned earlier about the cosby show yes the man is a monster just like Michael that Jackson. Doesn't, well, exa- see, exactly. Like, Bill Cosby, the man, 
I separate it from what he has done right. in acting, in comedy or whatever. Like, I still can listen to his Bill Cosby himself thing from 1969 with, like, Buck Buck and, and mm. uh, The Water Bottle and, and, you know, Driving in San Francisco. And I can listen to all that and laugh my ass off because I know it's comedy and it's a joke and it's funny. But do I still feel that the man is a monster? Absolutely. Right, and the same decision that people have to make when they're listening. You know, can you listen to a Michael Jackson song and still enjoy it for the music, where even though you know he's a creep, you know, it's 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 it is what it is. So you have to make those decisions because you know, otherwise you're gonna have to eliminate a whole lot of entertainment out of your life because nobody is an angel. Um, Some are worse than others, but everybody has their demons, and uh, especially in when you talk about celebrities. So, I mean, we couldn't watch professional wrestling if we cared about what kind of people some of these guys were behind the mm-hmm. scenes when they're doped mm-hmm. up and on drugs and steroids, et cetera, just like baseball. I couldn't watch that if you mm-hmm. eliminated everybody that cheated. Mm-hmm. So in different ways, yeah. Pete Rose, the, you know, the Astros, the steroids, the blah, blah, blah. Yep. So, um, you have to make your own personal decisions on what you can, uh, participate in what you can take in. But for me, I can separate most of it. Um, I can separate most of it myself as well. And it just like, okay. So I did this a while ago. I had my my friend Tom DJ on Geekcast Radio. We did um, broken fandoms and how to fix them. And Tom has come up with this, what he calls the modern fandom manifesto. And it's this set of rules of how you should be treating fandom and how you should be reacting and acting in, in your fandoms. Just because you love something, Kevin... Doesn't mean that I have to, but I right. still respect. Okay, that's that's your thing. You love that. That's amazing. That's great for you. It's not for me. I'm not shitting on it. I'm not saying, oh my god, you shouldn't like them. Just like half the people tell me I shouldn't love Scrappy Doo or I shouldn't love Nickelback or whatever. You know, Isn't it's that? a thing of treating people better, treating them more. I don't know. I don't uh, know it's just it's just more of every you know if something's bringing somebody joy or entertainment like yeah. for you to tell them that they shouldn't enjoy that like I can not I can not stand the um, Pokemon and Power Rangers but it doesn't mean that I'm upset that other people enjoy it and other people get satisfaction and entertainment and escape or whatever um, mm-hmm. from those different things just like uh, someone could say that you know Star Wars and MacGyver and Transformers are garbage like that's not going to stop me from enjoying them so. Uh, we can all like what we like, and nobody has to I, be judged for it. Yep. I got into an argument with somebody the other day on Facebook, the other night at like 4 a.m. Pacific. Oh, jeez, that's never smart. Time. Well, they basically, now, said, <laughs> they basically said Transformers was nothing but a toy commercial. And I'm like, no, yes, it was, but no, it wasn't. <laughs> that's one of my triggers is when people call uh, yeah. animated series 80s, or animated yeah. films, they, they call them... Uh, uh, what, Toy commercials. No, or even just they try to downgrade it by saying like, "Oh, you know, you you watch that cartoon or that like like that's a bad thing or something like that or that kids cartoon yeah. or something like that." Like, no, just because something's animated doesn't mean you can't enjoy it at different ages. So, and a lot of that stuff is made for more audiences than just kids. Uh, a lot of it is trying to appeal to the parents that are taking those kids and different things like that. So, there's nothing wrong with enjoying whatever you want to enjoy as long as you're not breaking any laws. Um, or hurting people in the meantime. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that's how I feel. But this would be an interesting conversation to kind of go over, not necessarily just 50s, 1950 to 2000, but take a certain time period and decide, you know, from an entertainment standpoint or from a music standpoint or from a different sort of these genres go, what is the what was resonating the most for that time period? Kind of like a look back, like a time capsule yeah. type thing. So absolutely we might we might adventure into some of those things mm-hmm. but I, in the meantime we want to hear what your guys thoughts are on what entertainment weekly put out as their 100 entertainers from 1950 to 2000 and do you agree with the one of the some of the snubs that we pointed out or who do you think didn't belong or maybe you can think of someone that we didn't mention that should be in consideration we'd uh, love to hear all those comments at the website geekcastradio.com or on social media twitter and facebook mike how do they do that that would be at Geekcast Radio for the network Twitter. You can also send email to feedback at geekcastradio.com. But yes, please go to the website, make comments on our posts because 
I see nothing but tumbleweeds in our comment yeah. sections lately. There has been a couple episodes that, that our good buddy Tune Master Tim has commented on, and we absolutely love him for that. So there is that. That's the but, easiest way um, to make sure that we're going to, you're guaranteed to get a response from us if you do that, basically, because we yeah. check and, and we will respond if you comment on the website. Absolutely. If not, you can also uh, harass Mike on Twitter. Mike, what's your Twitter? Lord. It's um, at Optimus Solo. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> and they can harass me as well. That's fine. <laughs> uh, it's at TFG1 Mike on Twitter. Sweet. Get us out of here, Mike. Uh, we're out of here. Um, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to close this because. Episode yes, 200. 200. Yes, episode 200. Um, uh, okay, so let me ask you this. Do you use Spotify? I have it. No, I don't use it. You have it, but you don't use it. Do you pay for it? I do not. Okay. Well. <laughs> it, Is that required for episode 200? It might be. Just for a <laughs> month. Um, it's just so you can get a certain thing. Because episode 200, folks. And I guess people have told me that this was released last year or something. It did not show up for me last year, or at least I didn't. And the way that Spotify lists it is that it got released this year. And technically, this is the 30th anniversary of the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film. I will freely admit this. I don't remember who sent it to me, but I have a bootleg copy of the score of this film. It's not the best one, but now we have an actual official release by John Duprez, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles original 1990 motion picture soundtrack. It has, uh, I don't know how many tracks are actually on here, but it's, you know, it's got the whole, every movie bit, it's got the Shredder music, it's got the Raff and Casey music, you know. All that, it's got the, the main theme, it's got everything. So basically our 200th episode on GeekCast Radio, hopefully, um, I believe Steve Megatron will be joining us. Uh, if you would like to join us, you're more than welcome to. Um, we will be talking about this score and this film. More specifically the score, but obviously, how can you not talk about Turtles when you're talking about Turtles? Good. If that makes any sense, so stay tuned for that. Yes, I don't know when that's going to be because episode two hundred. Mike and yes, episode two hundred. Um, Sam, I'm saying I don't know when that's going to get recorded. I know because you're retired. So I yeah, get it. I'm I'm Mike and I'm a retired podcaster. I have a problem. After his next meeting, when he comes out of retirement for the seventeenth time, um, like Michael Jordan, <laughs> he will uh, be ready to record two hundred turtles coming at you, oh, breaking out of Lord. their shells. TFG Bring and Mike, the last dance. Breaking out of their shells tour. Coming at you. <laughs> yeah, coming out of your shells. Good Hi, Lord. folks. We're leaving now. Un- Unleash the geek in you, and we will catch you next time here on GeekCast Radio. Radio.